So uh, for all my life, I've did all my case, my dyspastic case through the entire approach. 25 years ago, I start when I was a young surgeon. Okay, <clears throat> we just published that recently, so if you want all the data, you can find that in GOA. So since 1993, when I became a young surgeon, <clears throat> I did all my, all, without any exception, all my uh, CRO 2, 3, 4 with entire approach. And why I, did, I choose this stupid way? Because people used to say it was impossible, and I had a feeling it was possible. It's not a very good scientific way to, to think, but it works. It, for me, at least, it works. The idea was the same, to preserve the muscle and to use the traction table to help for the reduction. <clears throat> so in severe dysplasia, I would say I would do a classic retro approach. Maybe I would cut the path reflector to have a better access to the upper acetabulum. <clears throat> a complete capsule to me, most of the time, is mandatory, but not always. I do the reconstruction of the acetabulum at the level of the paleoacetabulum and never elsewhere. Uh, sometimes you have to do tenotomy of the psoas, and sometimes, in really big uh, crow 4, you have to do a shortening of the femur. Reconstruction of the paleoacetabulum. Yesterday, uh, <coughs> Jad Parvati showed you a way to do that. I'm going to show you a little bit the same way, but very uh, step by step, so it makes, I don't say it's easy when you haven't seen how it works, but it could be easy. So it's not a crow, it's a crow uh, 2 3, not very dis difficult case. <coughs> But I'm going to show you what is absolutely f f fundamental and very important. You must find a press fit between the anterior wall and the posterior wall. This is a size, this AP size gives you the, the good size. So when you are at this level, you know you have a big defect at the upper part, <clears throat> but the press fit coming from the upper anterior part is mandatory. If you don't have that, then everything becomes more difficult. And most of the time, even it's very small, 38, 40, 42, you should find anterior wall and posterior wall. And then you have the defect, which is the upper part. I take the femoral head, <coughs> I take the definitive cap, by the it's 46, and I use the femoral head, and I do this little mark uh, using that, so you, have, you will have the shape. And this size is exactly the size of the, of the defect. And then you take your blade, <coughs> and you're going to cut the, what you have drawn absolutely perpendicular to the surface, on every, every level. So it goes like that. Remember, you just cut perpendicular. So it takes you at this time, I would say, three minutes, and then you have this Pac-Man face at the end of the femoral head side, and you have the other, other side. And what I want to have, I want to put the spongiosa against the, the, against the defect. If you start to put the cortical bone on the defect, it doesn't heal very well. On the other side, it heals very fast. And then sometimes you just have to finish because you have done the V-shape, <coughs> which is not very easy. And then you just put two lax screw. Uh, usually we use 3.5. To, to help me, I just put a small uh, rimmer inside to just to hold the, the cup in good position. You can even finish the, to have a perfect rimmer, but just sometimes you even go reverse. That's sufficient. And then it's done. <coughs> and you can impact a cementless cup. It takes you no more than five minutes. And I like when I've done this. I take my, my, the, the piece of bone, I put it inside, and it's done. I, I don't have to go back, back many times. It just, it's so easy, so simple. <clears throat> I need 20 years to find the perfect way, but now it works perfectly. Just a small video to show you that in true life. So you have the defect, which is just here. And you see, you just cut. It's on the distal part, it's easy to make the, the cut, but here, the best is to do a V-shape, and then you can just finish to make it round. With uh, <coughs> okay, you finish, place it, picador, two drill bits. Video is literally slightly accelerated. <coughs> okay, you just rim, the rimmer is in place. You can finish the rim usually <coughs> very little. You can sometimes you have to add bone distally, and then you can impact the definitive cup, and it's most of the time it works. So. <clears throat> and that's the final X-ray on both sides. And this is kind of X-ray you see after one month. It's surprising how the, the graft integrates to the, to the bone. It works extremely well. <clears throat> this is, of course, much more difficult. And surprisingly, in this crow force, sometimes you don't need it to graft the acetabulum because you, and the size of the paleo, you have really a true paleo acetabulum. And surprisingly, the, the higher the, you don't, the higher the, the, the femoral, femoral so you, you don't need to graft. When I saw this very young lady, 70 years old, and she was like in the misery, she couldn't, especially on the left leg, so <clears throat> she was, I was, I, I was thinking to do conservative surgery, but f honestly, 
I didn't know what to do. The head was not round. It was, I, I don't know what to do. Maybe I could do a colonel. I don't know. Maybe Gantz would do, have done something. I feel unable to do anything better than a total hip replacement. And this is what I've done. And in this case, no grafting. This is a 40 cup uh, custom made. <clears throat> and I use, uh, you see, I had to do a shortening from a first shortening osteotomy. So that was the worst case. But from the end, she was five or six centimeters longer. So we also had to do the other, other hip, which was not that bad. And we did exactly the same. <clears throat> and that six months later, she's nearly perfect. She go back to a normal life normal life of a millennial. She can run, she can do sports, she can do... Uh, she's not, she won't go to the Olympic Games, for sure, but she go back to absolutely normal life. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how you can do this substrotic osteotomy with the entire approach. It looks like crazy, it is not at all, because in fact, when you have this, uh, this... The femur is quite high, so in fact, through the incision, you see the level of the... Of the <clears throat> where you should do the substrotic osteotomy. It's not a big problem. So, <clears throat> when I've done my cup, I start to broach, and then regular broaching, or maybe custom-made broaching, depending on the, of, the case, of the shape, and then <clears throat> I try to make the reduction. Reduction is easy, you can make, oh, easy, it's not very easy, but you can make the reduction, definitive time is finished. A reduction looks like impossible, it's too difficult, you have to cut everything, which is not a good way to do. I would do subcortic shortening osteotomy, and that's not such a big problem. <clears throat> You remove a little bit of the vastus lateralis. You have to be careful with the nerve just around. It's not a huge problem, especially in this high dislocation. The femur is very high, so the nerve are rather low. It's not a big problem. I suggest you do a mark because sometimes you need to do a <coughs> kind of derotation, especially in this case. You remove a piece of bone. Usually, it's not. You don't need really to remove much. Usually, I remove one centimeter, something less. I always remove something like one centimeter, never to come back to remove more. <coughs> and then you. You, you can broach the distal part a little bit deeper, usually the side of, the, of the, what, you have, what, you, what you have removed. This is usually what you see through the entire approach. The femur comes up very easily. It's not a problem because the greater tuck goes behind. And then you pass the broach, the, the definitive stem, through the upper part, and the upper part, just everything goes down and fix. You can fix it or not. It depends on the stability of what you, what you have done. And then you make the reduction. And the reduction is very easy. <coughs> at least not difficult. This is a case I've just done three months ago. Uh, it was a bit challenging. She had a surgery, she was quite young. She had a surgery when she was young, and she had 90 degrees of antiversion, and, it, and she also had this plate that was placed, probably she was something like six years old. And uh, the problem, I just know by experiment that if you try to remove this plate, you're going to have a big hole inside the, the bone, because the plate now is nearly inside the bone. So the idea was to just remove the screws. How can you remove the screws through the entire approach? It's not a big problem. You just go for a lot of internal rotation. When you have removed the femoral head, you go in a lot of internal rotation. You can access to the hardware without any problem, and I would have removed the screws as much as I need. <clears throat> so in this case, I also did not do it in any um, reconstruction of the acetabulum, but it's a very small cup. It's a 42, I remember. I removed the screws. I did exactly the same. And then the end, I used the plate to put a circlage wire to have a better fixation. Uh, and <clears throat> now we have to do the other side. Okay, and you see all this with not such a huge incision, at least much smaller than what she had when she was a child. So as a result of all this uh, experience, <clears throat> in fact, at the end, it's only 30, uh, especially the... I probably have done more in my public hospital, but I wasn't able to get the result of the public hospitals. Just a little nightmare. <clears throat> so, a rather young patient, but not always very young. We have a good follow-up, minimal one year, but some are nearly 20 years now. Six patients have previous surgery before total hip replacement. And that's initial cohort, you see. Uh, three patients we re had to be revised for polyten wear. Uh, this patient had operated in the late 90s, at 14, 16, and 18 years. One patient died, she had two hips, uh, so we only have 42 hips to, 24 hips to, to control. Uh, that's the result previous surgery. <coughs> result, that works. This is, uh, my feeling is this is a patient where I give the most uh, improvement. They are miserable and they become, I don't say happy, but it's really, it completely changed their life. So the level of satisfaction is very high and you see nobody is dissatisfied. Usually they, when they come, they are really in a very bad position. We had a few operative complications. Um, usually those patients have bad bones, either one fracture, crack, two femoral fracture fixed with circlage. Usually this is not something really big and world-fold strategy we correct during surgery. 
And post-operative complication, I have one fracture one month. I have to plate and screw the fixation went very well after. One partial non of the GT, uh, probably on the worst case I have done. And one transient femoral nerve passing, it was of seven centimeters, but luckily she fully recovered in six months. No infection, no dislocation. That was the worst case I've done. This guy, <coughs> he was, I dis he was, of course, on one side was okay, on the other side was high dislocation. They had the idea to make a lengthening, lengthening with the orthofix. So <coughs> I had the feeling to be a carpenter. The head, the, all the, the tight was like wood. It was very difficult, full of fibrosis. It was simply a nightmare. So in this case, I have to do shortening osteotomy, everything. But as you see at the end, at the end of the greater truck, I don't know if it's perfect. After a few, it was quite happy like that, but still com uh, complaining a little bit, so I go back and put uh, this uh, ugly hook, but now he's quite happy. So in conclusion, that what now is impossible, and I would even say this is a very good way to do it, as long as you are uh, okay to do things with the entire approach. You shortening a femoral shaft is possible and not especially difficult. Reconstruction of the palace Paleo stable is really not a problem. Now everybody knows to do that. I just should show you my little tricks to make it easier. And I like to do it on the extension table, for sure. Thank you.